everybody, it's Courtney and Leanna from Creative Bug, and we're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And today we're super excited because we have a giveaway for you. Yay! Giveaway! The boys are the best because we get to share with you some great ideas and some fun goodies. And what do we have to give away? Well, today is sort of like Amy Butler fan fest. Um, we're huge fans of Amy Butler here. This is not Amy Butler, in case you were curious. Neither this one of Anna. us are Amy. <laughs> I hope you're not expecting her to walk in the door. She's not walking in the door. But we're just what, surrounded by her beauty. <laughs> what is walking in the door is all of these amazing things that she has made um, and designed. And um, and let's tell them about what we're going to be giving away. She has a couple of books with Chronicle books that are spectacular. That's part of the package. We'll show you those in a second. We've got this awesome stack of fat quarters with her newest line of fabric from Free Spirit. Super sexy. Mm -hmm. These beautiful Renaissance ribbons. They're all woven and they coordinate with her fabrics. This is um, her new book, Peacekeeping, um, that is out from Chronicle, and it's such a glorious little book. Of course, they've done an amazing job with As the, always. the patterns in there. Um, 20 so projects. Definitely want to check that out. And then also, this is Amy Butler's magazine. I love they call this a magazine. It's so spectacular. Look how, look how fat that is. If you haven't seen it, it's basically a lookbook of inspiration, color palettes, ideas, ephemera, little interviews with people that inspire Amy Butler herself. And it is one grand prize package. And in addition to this, a three month subscription to Creative Bug. So if you haven't checked out Creative Bug before, or this is your first time coming to us. We do these live shoots every Tuesday and Thursday. But you can also find over 700 classes on our website, creativebug.com. And you can find that in all kinds of things quilting, sewing, mm -hmm. art and illustration. Knit, crochet. All the things. All the crafty things. So two lucky winners are going to win this prize package. And in order to win, you have to. All you have to do is share this live stream and like our Facebook page. Yeah, and make it's sure to give a little love to Amy Butler Design on Facebook and Chronicle Books on Facebook. Yep, and we will be picking two winners tomorrow morning who will be getting the so prize like and package. share. So with all of that being said, um, a big part of the reason why we wanted to do this special live shoot um, featuring and giveaway. and giveaway featuring Amy Butler products is not only do we just love working with the materials, um, and we actually have several Amy Butler classes on our site. So if you like actually taught by her, mm -hmm. um, so be sure to check out Creative Book and see her classes. But we were so inspired by this prize package, and we thought, you know, what are some really easy, simple things that we can do um, with just these raw materials? So we have a couple of ideas we wanted to share with you. Yeah, we have two ideas. I'm going to start, and then Leanne is going to take us over. But before we start, I don't want to forget about the CBTV episode that also just recently launched. <gasps> Thank you for remembering. If you haven't checked out CBTV, it's um, our new baby. Creative Bug has been working on this for a long time, and we've been working with over 100 artists over the last four years, and we have so much great content with them that is not about making anything. It's about inspiration, stories about their lives, and videos of their spaces. So when did we launch the Amy Butler the, new episode? The new episode of um, Amy Butler on CBTV went up on Friday, and it's this. it starts off with this adorable story of how she and David met and fell in love and like started this business together. And it's pretty inspiring and so romantic and adorable and their house is spectacular and you get a little peek of that. And um, David Butler also has an amazing collection called Parson mm -hmm. Gray. So yep. if you don't know about that, you should check out the CBTV episode, which I think Allison or Allie is posting momentarily on the Facebook page. So given all these glorious items in the giveaway, <laughs> uh, we thought we would come up with a couple of projects. And I really gravitated toward the ribbon. There's a lot of fabric, and Leanna's going to take over the fabric thing. But I thought for ribbon scraps, there are a lot of things that you could do. Of course, the first thing that I thought of was wrapping presents, because that's my favorite thing to do. But um, I thought some like little fashion items might be fun. So I was going to show you how to make a boho-inspired cuff, which um, uses just a little bit of ribbon and some felt. So you can use any of the ribbons in the ribbon pack. And you want to cut a piece of felt. I'm using a wool felt. And I cut it about a quarter of an inch wider than the ribbon itself. So you can see that in both of these cases here. I love it. So you could do this for the skinny or the fat. I've got two examples of the fat that I'm going to show you in just a minute. So I'm going to actually make a skinny one on camera. And you don't need a ton of ribbon for this. You could just use a little bit of a scrap. You do want to measure your wrist. And I'm going to go just to where they're touching because I'm going to use a closure to actually close this. They don't need to overlap or anything. Just to where they're touching. Sharp pair of scissors. Now you want to 
trim the ribbon just a little bit smaller than the felt and you're gonna fold it under. And to help you stitch this down, you could of course do the machine stitching for this, but I'm gonna hand stitch it using some embroidery floss. And to help us along, I might also use a little bit of a glue stick, just to keep everything in place as I'm hand stitching. I'm not gonna be delicate about it, so this is gonna move around a little bit as I'm stitching. So just wanna kind of center this. The ends are gonna come up, but I'm gonna stitch those down first. I'm gonna start on the end. And the glue stick just keeps this band centered as I go. I'm using a little bit of embroidery floss, and I have all my needles pre-threaded with about an arm's length of embroidery floss and knotted at the end. And that's a tip from Rebecca Rehnquist. She's one of my really good friends, and she's an amazing artist, and she teaches a lot of really awesome classes on Creative Bug, my favorite being the original Drop Class Sampler. I actually had breakfast with her this weekend, and she was in town teaching. Hi, Rebecca, we if you're watching. You. <laughs> <laughs> so one of her tips is to do a bunch of needles pre-threaded so that when you have the interest and time to actually embroider, you're not sitting there threading all of your needles. Yeah. And I'm using an embroidery needle with some embroidery floss. I've got the end of my ribbon Fold it over and I've got this pre-knotted. I'm just gonna stitch down the end to start. And I'm using a running stitch and I'm not a very precise hand sewer. I'm also using a contrasting thread just because I think the design of that is interesting. This is like so simple and such a beautiful way to use just like a tiny, tiny little bit of ribbon. Scrap. That yeah. I'm one of those like hoarders after like a birthday and I don't yeah. want to throw out my gift wrap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to do something. <laughs> this is the perfect use for that. So no tiny bit of ribbon is left behind at all. You can use every little precious scrap. And I'm just doing this rocking motion. So through the fabric and the felt. And you can fit quite a few stitches onto your needle and then you can pull through. And like I said, I'm using a contrasting color so that I can actually see my stitches. I like that as an addition to the design. But you could, of course, do whatever you want. You can coordinate. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and hand stitch this all the way down this length, turn over my end there, stitch along that short edge and back down and tie off. And while I'm doing that, Leanne is gonna show you how to make a really cute napkin using a fat quarter. Okay, so this is another one of my favorite things to do. Um, actually, when I, when I see a fat quarter bundle like this, um, of course I love patchwork and, um, and peacekeeping the book is all about doing amazing patchwork projects. But I also sometimes just love, you know, just the fabric itself, it's so glorious. And, right, you don't um, want to cut it up because some of the prints are so amazing. Right, so one of the things that just popped out at me immediately was that I just would love to take a whole set of these fat quarters and turn them into napkins. I think it would make, like for instance, Thanksgiving, imagine everybody at the table has a different floral napkin that all so ties pretty. together. Oh, I love it. So, um, so to do this, all you need to do is just cut off the one end. So you just want to start with a square. Um, it's going to give you an 18 inch square and I've already cut it off. And actually I'm going to demo for you though on a tiny little square, how I like to finish the edges because, um, you don't need to see me. sew all four really long sides. So what I am going to do, I think I'm already plugged in and everything is take this over to the machine. Um, I have got uh, this set up for a wide zigzag on the, the shortest possible stitch length. So um, we're just gonna finish the edges and do kind of like a simulated rolled hem edge. Do you have a special foot on that? Nope, this is just a regular foot. Oh, cool. It is, I mean, like literally you could do this on the most basic sewing machine ever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you guys were live, so you could ask questions. So Ali says we have a question. What's your question? Yeah, so speaking of holidays, Jennifer asks, are there holiday ribbons? I'm getting things together to make gifts. Oh, good oh, question. Okay, Jennifer wants to know if there are holiday ribbons as she is getting together her her gifts for the holidays. 
Well, I can't speak for Amy Butler's design if she has a second release of ribbons before the holidays, but um, I really love using kind of non-traditional holiday colors for packaging. If you walk into any store during the holidays, you can see that there are themes for the season. Hot mm -hmm. pink, of course, is very popular, so you might see hot pink in there. I think these kind of bohemian-inspired ribbons would be beautiful packaging, and mm -hmm. I actually have a little idea for that at the end about how to use fabric as packaging. So good question, Jennifer. Yes, and I believe that Courtney has a fabric or a surface design oh, I class do. that is launching next week um, where she is going to show you how to decorate your own ribbons. Um, yeah. And so you can do custom holiday you can do your custom. prints and colors. Yeah, and I also have a class already on Creative Bug on how to paint your own gift wrap. So you can check that out now if you're just waiting, chomping at the bit to start yes. that holiday wrap. It sounds like you are. Good for you starting in August. I know. So proud of you. Okay, with that being said, should we move on to sewing? Yes, show us what you're going to do. Okay. All right, so I've got my little, imagine you're going to be using a large piece of fabric. I'm just going to be doing this on the little guy. We're just going to line this up uh, so the needle is just right along the edge of the fabric. I don't even backstitch because I'm going to go over this so many times. And I'm just going right along the edge. And when I get to the corner, I want to get pretty close to the corner with the needle down in the fabric. I'm going to turn it around. And now you get a little look of what's happening here. So I'm, I'm starting to wrap the edge in zigzags. So we're going to go around all of the edges the exact same way. This can really come together pretty quickly. So just imagine your holiday table it can happen before your very eyes. Okay, and one more corner to do. I love even that tiny one could be like a coaster. Uh, it really could. It's just fun for patches. I mean, anything you want. So you could technically leave it as is, but what I actually love to do, because you'll see there's still a little bit of fraying here, um, so I go in and go around one more time. And what happens when you go around, I'm, I'll do one so you can see it. So you are going to use a lot of thread doing this, but it's just like fun, mindless kind of sewing. So you'll see here, you start to get a really nice bound edge. And I'll show you the finished napkin that I already did ahead of time. So you can see you get this like really cool rustic design around the edge. It's a great way to do this without a rolled hem foot. Um, and it makes it feel really nice and sturdy. So these will definitely last you through the wash. They're not going to fall apart. I would recommend washing the fabric before you do this because um, it might change the way the stitches lay down um, if you wash it later and it shrinks. But um, you can do this really quickly. And then it, for bonus points, take your, uh, your ends that you cut off and you can even sew them together and make a table runner. How cute is How that? How about that? I love that. So um, I actually have a class on Creative Bug that teaches you three different ways to make napkins. So that is one of the ways, um, the faux rolled hem edge. Um, I love it. You have like a fringe napkin. There's a fringe napkin, and then there's kind of a classic mitered, mitered corner. corner. So if you are curious about exploring the world of napkins, please check it out. Um, and then we I think haven't that's even. It's like a really fun way too, just to like change up your holiday decor without like a ton of investment and effort and something you could use all year long. But you can just add like exactly. a few fun colors just with some. And with linens. a fat quarter bundle, like that choice is already made for you. Like right. the whole all, it, it already goes together. Um, so it's kind of eclectic, but but not too crazy. Um, yeah. And then I just want to mention, while we have everybody here, we if you're curious about Creative Bug, because we've been talking about this an awful lot, um, you can sign up right now with the promo code Facebook30, and you will get 30 days of Creative Bug for free. And that's so you just, can try all the classes. That's just our gift to you for yeah. being here. So you don't have to be the big grand prize winner just to, to yeah, just to check out Creative Bug for free for a whole month. But do like and share if you want to win that awesome Amy Butler gift pack. Yes. I've stitched down my ribbon scrap onto the felt, and I've brought my needle up to the top of the bracelet, and I need to add a button. And this is going to be the first part of my closure. 
So I've got a cute little wood button that I think coordinates. Just gonna tack that on. I totally do. Awesome. So Peggy wants to know, pertaining to the napkins, what is the width? Okay, Peggy wants to know what is the width of the napkins. It is 18 inches square. So um, a fat quarter, I believe, is 18 inches by uh, whatever this width is. So I think it's 20, 22 inches is what a fat quarter is. Um, so basically, it's a it's a half yard of fabric, as I understand it, that has been uh, recut in a different way. So you get so you get like the maximum print. The maximum print, a uh, little bit of a wider cut of fabric instead of a really long stretch of fabric. So um, so what we're doing is we're just squaring it up. So the the lot the shortest side of a fat quarter is 18 inches. So you're just making it a square. So you're just making an 18, 18 inch square. square. Yep. Good question. We've got our button on and I want to add a little bit of leather because I like the look of that with this fabric and ribbon. This is a metallic leather, which I think is super cute. I want to check one more time for how long I need that leather to be. Probably about an inch and a half, it will stretch a little bit. I need to leave room for my knot. So I'm just going to do an overhand knot with two pieces. Courtney, where did you get this gold? Leather. Isn't that sexy? You should check out just the local uh, jewelry section in your craft store. You can find stuff there. Often at the fabric store in the ribbon section, you can find leather trims. You don't have to be at an actual leather shop. You could, of course, check out a leather shop if you have one in your area. And I'm going to actually sew that on on top because I like the way this looks. Because I'm using that metallic uh, leather that I think is so pretty, it adds to the design. Mm -hmm. You could figure out something else where you don't tie a knot and you stitch these ends underneath your ribbon. But I actually like the way this looks. I've got another pre-threaded needle, and I've got it tied on the back, and I'm just going to tack it down. All right, we've got another question about the ribbon. Oh, I love the questions. More questions, okay. you guys. So we have a question about the ribbon. Yes, so Jennifer wants to know, do you find your needle sticking when going through ribbons? Oh, that's like a... It's not gliding through. How do I prevent that? Good question. So Jennifer's asking if she, sometimes she finds that her needle sticks when she's sewing through ribbons. This is a woven ribbon. It may depend on the type of ribbon that you're using. You want to make sure that anytime you're sewing, you're using a really sharp needle, and I'm using an embroidery needle. Um, probably Rebecca could talk to you in the embroidery class about other types of needles and threads and their mm -hmm. kind of comfortability with each other and all of that, compatibility yep. rather. Um, One little tip for you. If your oh, yeah, needle is not gliding through very well, it could just be an old needle. Um, this little guy, I don't know if you guys know this, but on any old um, tomato, pin cushion. tomato pin cushion, the little tiny strawberry dangler here, this is actually filled with emery, emery filings, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, and it's meant to sharpen your needles, so you can just run it through here a few times, and that's going to sharpen your needle. So give that a try. You never know. It might work. Yeah, I like that tip. That's awesome. Test this. <gasps> and it's a go. bracelet! It's got this cute metallic accent. I'm wearing one too. Leanna might have one on as well. <laughs> this is a cuff that I did. Instead of doing the closure with the button, I just used some fusible Velcro. That would be great for kids. And in this case, I used some fabric tack to put sequins to embellish these little moments in the ribbon. And like I said, no ribbon scrap is too small. This was a tiny little scrap. And this cuff actually... Just make a longer leather strap. Yeah, and I actually really like the way it looks layered. So that you could do oh, it's multiples. Oh, so cute! And in this case, I didn't even stitch down the ribbon. I just stitched it on the ends. I did not have to stitch it on the side because it's such a small scrap. So for I thought that was fun. super speedy crafting. Yeah. I and know. you guys are talking about getting ready for Christmas and wrapping. Another one of my favorite things to do with fabric because even though I'm not a huge sewer, I still have a huge fabric collection. <laughs> it doesn't stop her from buying fabric. Never does. Yarn either. I don't know how to knit or crochet despite the fact that I work at Creative Bug. And yet, I love to buy ribbon. But And I'm um, sorry, yarn and uh, all that good stuff, mostly for wrapping packages. So most of you maybe already know this trick, but it's super handy. And if you don't already know it, I think it's going to change your life. Any woven fabric, if you snip um, a little cut into any edge, you can then tear it. And it's the most accurate way to get a straight um, cut, if you will. But we're tearing it, and it's really satisfying. Uh. 
So a great way to use up any odds and ends, um, especially for like these long pieces, like if you were to cut it off and make the napkins and you've got this little tiny bit here and it's so precious you don't want to throw it out, but, uh, but it's maybe too small to do anything with. Then these uh, packages are perfect. There you go. So you could make a garland with this or a bunting or use them for gift wrap. And there's so many different ways to use just fabric fat quarters and these ribbons. Of course, um, the Blossom Book by Amy Butler has a ton of visual inspiration and you mm -hmm. might find something in there that's not even a technical project, but maybe you just find some something that inspires you. Whew. Did you mention the giveaway one more time? Yeah, so if you're just tuning in, we're Creative Bug. I'm Courtney and this is Leanna. We do these shoots every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, Thursday we have another little special thing using fabric and this time we're doing a giveaway. So the giveaway is Amy Butler's uh, book Blossom and Hang on, I'm grabbing the kit. Grab it. I'm grabbing all the things. So this is the again. giveaway. A fat quarter bundle. By Free Spirit. We've got ribbons. Renaissance ribbons. Beautiful. And we have Amy Butler's Blossom magazine slash book. It's so beautiful. You really have to peek inside of this. And peacekeeping. Amy Butler's Peacekeeping and a three month subscription to Creative Bug. All you have to do is share this live shoot and, and like, like our Facebook, Facebook page. That's it. We're going to so pick two simple. winners. Two winners tomorrow morning. So check back in. See you then, guys. Bye.